Uh, first one is from Lawrence B. in Sharon, Massachusetts. What should we be paying attention to for knowing when to add to the ECU? First, we're probably going to add to the ECU ourselves, so you'll know. Uh, but what makes it so that we were really going to get excited about it will be uh, the end of the uh, tapering of the of uh, by Draghi of the EU, uh, getting those bond yields higher. When they start going higher, the ECU will go higher. And um, as I mentioned. We, we do have some cash, and I'm just, I was kind of being cherry, waiting for a little bit under uh, 41, but we may just pull the trigger be, uh, because I think Europe is so right, as I mentioned at the top of this uh, our club presentation. Number two, can you present, uh, uh, provide an update on Allergan Pete uh, from Ramsey, New Jersey? Okay, Allergan, very frustrating, right? I mean, the stock looks like it. I talk to Bruce Kamich all the time, you know, our great technician. Keeps looking like it's going to break out. Brent Saunders uh, doing a terrific job. Uh, if you look at the P.E. of this company versus its growth rate, because it's got a mid-teens growth rate, the growth, the P.E. is 15. That's saying to people, look, the, uh, the big initiatives, including CoolSculpt, are not going to work. That Botox is going to slow down. That Latisse, Latisse is going to uh, have more competition. I think all of these are false worries. I think that the company's doing very well. Um, I am just counseling patients. Uh, I don't feel that the stock can break out till you see the quarter. But I think the quarter will be fine. Remember, um, they're going to be able to get uh, have a lot of Teva stock that they can sell to raise more money. Um, they are fixing the balance sheet. They're doing so many things that are right. I really urge people to have patience and Allergan. Remember, we got in it uh, and had a great game. We did the unfathomable sin just a couple years ago of, of letting it come down when Pfizer walked away. We didn't think Pfizer was going to walk away because I spoke with Pfizer. I spoke with the government and I spoke with Allergan. And nobody thought it would, but it did. Uh, I just think the valuation's too cheap to get rid of it. Uh, why not buy more? It uh, won't really help our basis. We did buy some at the, you know, below 200. Okay, third question. Given the CEO change and downgrades pressuring the stock, how do you view GE going forward? Kim from Middleton, New Jersey. GE is just a huge disappointment. Uh, I happen to like Mr. Flannery. I did a lot of work on him. He'll be the new CEO. Uh, there are so many negatives about this. I, the company's reiterated that the quarter's going to be good. I know a lot of people don't trust him. Reiterated that the dividend's going to be good. I uh, think that they wouldn't do that uh, if they didn't have conviction. Maybe they're not going to be able to buy back stuff. Can we give Flannery a chance? One of the big problems was the company was stale. And I think that they can do a lot. I think they can cut $2 billion. I think that Nelson Pelz's pressure from Tryon is going to be very good. I like the setup. Not running, not abandoning it. It's been up for two straight days. Trades like an oil stock. All right. Uh, Brooke MS has your opinion on Nucor change at all following recent political events. Yeah, well, look, if, if the president still thinks, Charles Krauthofer, by the way, good friend, uh, wrote a good piece in the Washington Post about how the president's going to have to acquiesce in North Korea. Let's say that. But, you know, the president right now believes that he can pressure China to help. And, and China wants the situation to be as it is. When the president, when that dawns on the president, I think that they put through this uh, national defense initiative, which says that we got to preserve the steel industry. Um, when he does that, uh, or if he does that, the new core is going to take off. Uh, I didn't, I, I, I have great confidence over the long term in new core either way, though. I don't need that. You don't need that from the president. Okay, question number five. Can you describe what catalyst that you'll be looking for in the NXPI tender offer as activists and other shareholders seek larger valuations? It's from Richard. Okay, here's what's going to happen in NXPI. Uh, the people from Elliott Partners, whom I know and I think are doing a great job, are saying don't tender. If you don't tender, then the company's going to have to ask, you know, have to give you more money. That's why I've urged you not to tender. Uh, the stock is trading above where it would be otherwise. Now, I do feel, let me just be play with an open hand, that I kept waiting for NXPI to chain to to uh, close, and then we get the money and we would buy Broadcom. Uh, and I was hoping that if Cisco, uh, that we would sell all the Cisco, frankly, and we're going to do it at a certain point because I'm disappointed with that meeting, gave you the Boltons last week. And I thought that NVIDIA would stay down and we could buy NVIDIA. NVIDIA is going to be a bullpen name. It's killing me. I make a lot of jokes about NVIDIA and my dog. That's because NVIDIA is like mentioned every day like my dog. But NVIDIA is up five. I have, I have to find a way to get into NVIDIA for the trust. And uh, I should have bought it when it was down. Should have, would have, could have. You know, I, that's not the way I like to play it. But NVIDIA is Intel. At 93. Why did I buy Broadcom over uh, NVIDIA? Broadcom is like a 14 times earnings. NVIDIA is hideously overvalued when it comes to current earnings. It won't be when it comes to future. Artificial intelligence is real. I just, you know, I do stream of consciousness with the club. Can't do that on the show. All right. 
uh, uh, NLK asks, Comcast has been coming down in recent weeks. Can you please update what is pressuring the stock? Yes. It was a Moffitt Nathanson. That's a very uh, reliable firm uh, coming out and saying that they may have a problem with the quarter. Uh, I have no idea. I work for Comcast. I have no idea whether I have a problem with the quarter. I like how the company is set up with the buyback and most importantly with the cash flow. They have incredibly profitable cash flow. They do are doing so much right. This is not a Disney situation. And I think that uh, their broadband initiatives are really super. I, I just think that if you uh, buy Comcast here and buy some more later, it's been just a fabulous stock for a very long time. I'm not walking away. All right, Bob S. from Vienna, Virginia says, what are your latest thoughts on Apache following a strong, strong rally on Monday? Okay, so the rally was caused by the Barron's article. Here's my take, all right? And it's going to take a little time to, to give you the complete. Uh, and some of it's from Rusty Brazil from rbnenergy.com. Uh, Apache has a, a tremendous natural gas find in Alpine High. We've been saying that much of the street is uh, very suspicious or critical or skeptical. There's a big, big short position buildup. This is going to be what I think is the, the next largest nat natural gas find after the Marcellus and the Utica in, in Pennsylvania and, o and Ohio. And they're building pipe right now with a giant d diameter. And that's the determination, by the way, about uh, how much you believe. They're building pipe with a 30-inch diameter, which means that they're really, they're basically going to be uh, move, uh, looking for a 50% increase in the natural gas coming from the Permian. They have, ET, they have ETP helping them to be able to transport it. When you read that Mexico short natural gas, that's Apache. The Apache will be able to provide it. There was an article yesterday about Australia and about how Australia ended up being short natural gas because they sent so much away. And I've got to tell you, um, what's really, really important here, okay, is that Apache uh, is going to be able to provide enough natural gas. We're not going to have a shortage. That's how big this darn thing is. And I think it's worth the price of the company away from everything else. And the pipe that they're putting in, uh, which is ultimately going to be able to provide two billion of uh, 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 MCA, two billion of, of the uh, cubic feet, will I think make it so that it's the fastest grower? And remember, they got a thirty-three dollar uh, per barrel price for their oil, so they got the lowest oil. In, with oil forty-five, they coin money. They've got the cheapest natural gas with a natural market. They're building their own pipeline, and the darn thing can't get out of its way. But I, uh, what am I going to do? It is worth so much more than it's selling for. All right. Now, uh, Thomas K. in Hickory, North Carolina writes, there has been much news, has not been much news lately with Snap One. Are there any updates in the company? Okay, so yesterday we got a buy recommendation from FBR Securities, a fine place, saying the stock is just too cheap, even if there is some issues with the slowdown in their van business. Now, uh, the stock's down 10% for the year. Uh, it is heavily shorted. Nick Pinchuk comes on Mad Money and has repeatedly said, look, it's, things are going their way. Uh, now, against that was O'Reilly's miss, AutoZone's problems, uh, Vance Auto Parts problems. And people just say, listen, it's part of that cohort, plus it has a credit issue. Now, the credit issue uh, wasn't a problem in the Great Recession. Uh, are, the, are the sales slowing for all those companies I just mentioned? Yes. Does that necessarily mean that they're throwing for, slowing for snap one? They weren't last quarter. But snap one has spent so much time diversifying away from just the van business, which is still a big part of the business, but diversifying away that for this thing to be at 15 times earnings, even if they, you know, they cut estimates, uh, doesn't make sense. That said, I, there's enough of the trader in me from the old days to know this stock acts terribly. Now, it went up nine points from the reported last time. I should have sold half of it instantly, uh, uh, but I didn't want to trade it. And I felt that the market would recognize that Snap-on shouldn't be as involved uh, as an analogy to the advanced auto parts and to the O'Reilly's and to the uh, auto zones. But the market didn't view it my way. Uh, why haven't we bought more? Well, the reason we haven't bought more is because of precisely what I said. It acts badly. And I know enough to say that there's something that the company is not helping us with. Why aren't they doing big buyback? Uh, why aren't they saying, look, you should be a buyer of Opco just came out. Opco reiterated to buy. Uh, like I said, we just got this buy recommendation yesterday and it didn't move. So I'm waiting. I'm waiting patiently. But uh, Nick Pinchuk's got to deliver. He's got to deliver on all these ways to be able to make it so it's not just a van trade. Okay. Uh, Mary W. writes, how do you view Southwest Airlines following its most recent downgrade? Oh, my God. This wolf research downgrades the thing. Let me tell you something. Let me tell you how stupid this downgrade is. Southwest Air is the best run airline. Now, you got a great 
neighborhood in the airlines. I mean, look, you know, United's up 10 points since they booted that person from the plane. Um, you got an unbelievable company run by Gary Kelly. It does sell at 16 times earnings, okay? So here's what the analysis is, just to give you the analysis of why someone downgrades it. It sells at 16 times earnings, where United Continental sells at 10 times. So, you know, the guy's just basically saying it's too expensive versus the group. What I am saying, it's a quality airline. I'm not going to trade. Um, you know, I was tempted to say in my top 10 that we should buy this. But now I'm thinking, you know, maybe what will happen is that what will have to be is, is that you have to see the quarter. But they uh, put out some numbers on uh, the other day, the same day that, that Wolf downgraded. The numbers weren't as strong as some of the other guys. But the other guys have really bad, easily, easily compares. It's okay to own an airline because it's well run. And Southwest, but by the way, Warren Buffett's airline, that's, he owns a ton of it. Southwest is incredibly well run. I'm not going to trade it. And I'm not going to say, hey, listen, Wolf says it's up too much, so therefore you got to go. I have Wolf Research. I'm not going to trade off Wolf Research. I'm going to trade off a of Kramer Research. My research says you should own this stock. All right. Ward writes, Facebook's run has made it heavily weighted in my portfolio. I'm inclined to sell it. But I am concerned it might trade higher. How should I treat this portfolio? We did an analysis of Facebook and how it acted after the last quarters. When the company guides up and has a strong quarter, the stock goes higher. When the company doesn't really do anything and just says, hey, things are fine, the stock goes lower. But it doesn't really get hit that bad. The stock is up huge. Um, do I think that, uh, that you should take uh, profits in it. I really like it. It's a big position for us, too. And we got Twitter going up here. Can Twitter, Matt Horwin asked me, can the stock go to Houston, my writing partner? Can it go Twitter go through 20? Social media has got two players here. We got Twitter and we got Facebook. Facebook doing much better. Snap, obviously, um, disadvantage here. Uh, I think that Facebook is inexpensive. Uh, here's how I judge Facebook. We'll do some real-time action here. Okay, because I think that people have to recognize why I have not uh, been a trimmer of Facebook other than a little slug much long ago. Facebook is supposed to earn about eight bucks, according to my calculations, uh, it, it, eight bucks in 2019. All right. So the stock is at 158. I mean, you know, 20, 20 times uh, 2019 earnings is too cheap. So I am saying that you should own Facebook. Uh, we did do a, a small trim. If you want to do a small trim, that's fine. Nobody ever got hurt taking a profit, but I like it. Okay. John M. from Park City, Utah, writes, I have a lot of exposure to technology stocks. What is the best strategy to protect myself from a downturn in that sector? The de technology stocks that we own, okay, I think are all very exciting long-term positions, okay? Very exciting long-term positions versus, say, oil, which is so hard, versus, say, retail, which is so hard. You know, I just I look at these and I say, I do not want to be in uh, situations that have uh, sec that could be in secular decline. I want to be in companies that could have secular good, uh, and those stocks all have secular good. So I am saying you should own them. Remember, I did say that oh, in this NVIDIA, 161, killing me. But that's okay. We got Broadcom down and not up as much. But anyway, I like tech. Can you please explain the semiconductor industry and how the AP holdings relate? Okay. We, uh, we can't be a big, we can't be just a semiconductor uh, fun. Uh, we have NXPI and we have Broadcom. As I mentioned, look to see that uh, that Cisco will be leaving. And I thought that NVIDIA wouldn't have a big takeoff here. I didn't think it was going to take off until the earnings. The idea ultimately was to, to go that way. Um, you know, I like the semiconductor companies. I like uh, uh, I do like a bunch of the tech stocks. I didn't even talk about one that is that is probably the cheapest in the whole tech universe which is the, um, you know, the spinoff of Hewlett Packard that I like so much, that I think is absolutely terrific. Uh, DXC, I think is, you know, this is one where it's just killing me. DXC Technologies is trading at 10 times earnings. But, and I think Mike Lowry's doing a terrific job. I just think that we own cheap, cheap stock, cheap tech, and we own secular growth tech that is one in the, that basically have done a lot of competition, and I want to be in those stocks. When I've stepped aside from that, even going to healthcare, you know, you get Abbott, it doesn't really go up that much. Allergan, tech is winning. And I don't leave winners. Uh, I think these are good. Okay. Now, John S., Juan S. in Miami says, in a rising rate environment, are there any specific areas you would recommend investing in or avoiding? Can't own real estate investment trusts uh, in rising, rising rates. Can't really own the bond market equivalents. It's one of the reasons, by the way, that Kimberly Clark keeps uh, acting so terribly. And the Clorox is stalled. Those are bond market equivalents. Uh, but I think that in general, you own the banks, which is why we have a nice position in the city, why we're recommending key, uh, because these can do well. Uh, we trim Wells Fargo because it's going to take a long time for people to forget Wells and what it did. 
Okay. Alan C. writes, what is your opinion on municipal funds and developing a diversified portfolio? Okay. Municipal funds, this is up to you. Um, I can tell you that the rates are so, are so low, I wouldn't be in them. Okay. I would rather just keep the money in cash on the sidelines or own uh, an MMP, uh, Magellan Ministry. All right. Uh, Hilla M. writes, would you recommend diversification between index funds? No. Uh, you know, look, just own the S&P 500. Uh, those of you who are with Vanguard, I think that what you want to do, by the way, I, if I, Vanguard, I like the total return fund. I have my kids in the total return fund. I have my kids in, uh, uh, in the uh, S&P 500. I mean, that's kind of what I do. It's uh, nothing really special. And I don't want to outthink it. A lot of people say, well, Jim, which ones you do? They're all the same. I just like Vanguard because, as Warren Buffett said, that is the cheapest one. 